Let's go to the video tonight, another powerful one. And um, after that, I'm going to go to Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41. And, uh, and we'll wrestle with that scripture. And then, boy, we're going to preach the word tonight. Someone's going to get delivered from a storm in Jesus' name. Felicia Tucker's mother and stepfather were addicted to drugs. When she was 14, her parents' drug supplier started showing interest in her. He was 16 years older. When he would come over to get his money or whatever, he'd sit there and talk and chat a little bit. But he would always tell me um, that I was beautiful. I remember he kissed me. And I felt awkward because I'm like, this is a grown man. He's old enough to be my father. And then he started buying me stuff. I was like, wow. I felt like, man, he, he must really like me. He took me to his apartment one time. And he said, I, I want you to do something for me. He outright raped me. He um, said, now, you know, you've been teasing me, and now it's time to pay up. I felt violated. I felt used. I felt dirty. That same year, Felicia's parents were arrested and sent to jail. The supplier paid the bail and demanded a trade to clear their debt. So they made a deal, I guess, with each other. He said he, he would get his money right or whatever, and he said, well, Felicia stays with me. Felicia had to drop out of school in seventh grade and lived in isolation, enduring every type of abuse. For years, sometimes I didn't see another person because he kept me locked in the room. I felt like a slave, I did. He would sexually abuse me. He would call me out when he was ready for me. He said that I was his personal slave, I can do I can do with you, I can kill you. He went from calling me beautiful to ugly. He beat me several times, I'm close to death. During this time, Felicia's mom and stepfather made no effort to bring her home. He used to tell me he could kill me and nobody would know because he could bury me on the at the bottom of the hill of that land. And nobody would know because nobody's looking for you. Nobody was looking for me. Felicia felt the only solution was to end her life. I looked in his cabinet and I got some pills out and I took almost the whole bottle and I said, well, it's going to be over now because I don't want to be here. I can't, I can't go home. You know, I'm stuck. I don't want to be here. I hate it here. And I laid there and I closed my eyes and I thought it was going to be the end of it. And I woke up and I was mad that I woke up. Felicia lived in mental and physical captivity almost eight years. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I missed out on so much. When she was 22 years old, she finally resolved to run away. Her chance came when her captor forgot to lock her bedroom door one day. He used to always tell me that he was gonna kill me if I left. I had tried one time before to, to leave, like years before, and when, I, when he drug me back, I said if he locks this door, you know, my bedroom door, I was going to go out the window or anything. I was getting out of there that day. And I opened the door and I looked around at the living room, looked at where I had been for all those years, and I said, yeah, this is where I have been, but this is not my home. I'm not ever coming back here. Felicia fled 12 miles down the road on foot. I have not seen him. That was 19, October 1997. I have never seen him again. Felicia had no education, life skills, or family to live with. So the next day, she walked into the Army National Guard office and signed up. She kept her past hidden and thrived in a new environment. She later joined the Army and met her husband on assignment in 1999. Together, they had twin girls. After serving four years, Felicia left the military, and the trauma and abuse from her past began to seep into her marriage. After a divorce in 2005, she found herself a single mother struggling to make ends meet. When she fell behind on her daycare payment, a church worker offered her a glimmer of hope. She said, your girls go to the daycare here at the church. Why don't you all come to church this Sunday? She said, and I want you to know that as long as, as, long as you show effort, your girls will have a place to stay, you know, a daycare. And, and I was just looking at her like, wow. She's showing me mercy. It made me feel love. I remember the pastor preaching. He said, if there anybody in here that, has, that hasn't made uh, Jesus their, their Lord and Savior. And my heart just started beating real fast, I mean like in my throat. And I walked to the altar and I got saved. I gave my life to Jesus Christ that day. I just felt, I don't know, I just felt like the weight of the world was 
off my shoulders. I, I felt so light. I felt like dancing. I mean, I really, I could have did flips the way I was feeling inside. Before I was in bondage, physically, spiritually, I didn't know who God was. But when I felt the love of God, it's like that ball just started unraveling and I could start living again. Today, she is happily remarried, has a great job, and both of her daughters love God. Felicia says her new faith not only changed the course of her future, but it even changed her perspective on the past. He freed me from that bondage or feeling like I owe somebody. And he also freed me of that hurt. I forgive that man. I forgive him. I do. I pray he gets saved. I mean, I never thought I would be living the life I live today. You know what I mean? I belong to him. And I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. He says that I'm beautiful. He says that he loves me unconditionally, and I am the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, what a testimony. Pastor, the storm is over. Yeah. Locked in for years, raped. And I mean, her life was a total shambles. Her parents was on, on, on drugs, and they sold her to the drug dealer. And I've been in a situation where I've had to go rescue a child and mother from the drug dealer where the mother couldn't afford to pay her debt. So the drug dealer took the child and then she took a bar and hit him upside the head and cracked his skull. And uh, she was arrested and put in jail for attempted murder and all that kind of stuff. But boy, we, we prayed for her. Hallelujah. And uh, she got out of there. We got the child. Hallelujah. And uh, now her and her child are united, living in the Seventh-day Adventist way. And I tell you, man, I've seen those situations. People who are under the influence will do anything for a high. And it's not only people under the influence of drugs. I mean, under the influence. Uh, and that means an influence. So it could be a whole lot of things. But the good news is, whatever the storm is this evening, God is about to deliver us, hallelujah, from the storm. Fasten your seatbelts. I tell you, get ready to rumble. The next 30 minutes may just change your life. Hallelujah. If you got a Bible, let's go to the text. Let's go to the text. Hallelujah. And that is Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 mm, and verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, mm -hmm. and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Let us pray. Father, speak. Give us a word that will cheer us on our way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, this is one of those familiar texts that every evangelist you've heard has preached on. It's one of those text pastors that get the folk excited about storms being over. But the problem is after the storms is over, uh, then we go back and we get into another storm as we saw from the lady in the video. She left one situation and then she got into a marriage probably she shouldn't have got into. Uh, because she hadn't taken care of the baggage of her past life. I'm making a serious point here. Yeah. And, and, and as a result of doing that, because it seemed like it was a rebound move mm. from one negative, she bought into the marriage all that other negatives. And, and the poor man didn't realize what he was getting involved in. That relationship ended and she was left with two children. I'm talking about from one storm to the next. But I got good news for you. Don't care how severe the storms are and how frequent they come, there is a reason for storms. And we go and pack that as we move through this thing. Now, I dare you to smile because some of you are looking very miserable right now. Now, I want to see your faces. Don't so remember, we're not shouting hallelujahs. We're putting it in the chat. Is that all right? So fill the chat with the praise and the comments. But I do want to see your faces express the joy, hallelujah, yeah. that you feel. Now, 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 some of you got good teeth. Come on, say amen. So let's, let's, let's show it. Let's show the teeth that we have. You know, amen, amen, amen. And Victoria, that means you. Amen. Amen. Good. There you go. Hold it. Hold it there. Good. 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 Sister Brooks, I, I know your mouth isn't great, you were saying, but yeah, okay, no problem. No problem. Your face, your cheeks show it. Amen. 
your cheeks show it. Amen. And uh, Carol is always smiling. Sister Cynthia, how you feel? We need to see you smiling in Jesus' name. Amen. Shireen, uh, uh, the smile on your picture. Uh, I want to see it on your face. Amen. 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 Good. Good. There you go. Hold it. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. I can pick on people because they can't get me back. I'm in my house. Amen. And so the Bible says Jesus had just finished preaching. He had just finished preaching. Hallelujah. And he was telling parables. And he, in verse, in verse 35, was going back over to the other side because he was tired. I'm talking about the physical side of God. He was tired. And in, in, his, in his humanity, he wanted to rest. And so he gets into a boat and they're going across the Sea of Galilee. I'm talking about the storm is over. He's going across the Sea of Galilee. And, and as he's going across the Sea of Galilee, there was a calm. However, how many people know uh -huh, that the enemy isn't far behind you when things are calm? Because just before the storm, Pastor, there is a massive calm. There is a calm that is almost unbearable. There is a silence and sunniness. Come on now. The worst storms come during the summertime when everything is good. And I'm talking about hurricane season. I've had the privilege of living through some hurricanes in my life. And, 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 and the hurricane seasons in Miami and the hurricane seasons uh, in different parts of Texas and Mississippi, uh, New Orleans. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be doing revivals when the hurricanes have come through those places. And, and I want to tell you tonight that there is a strange thing about hurricanes. Just before the hurricane hits, there is a calm. It's a strange calm. It's a dangerous calm. And people were saying that it doesn't look like the storm is going to come. It is so calm outside. But I came by here to tell you that we are at our most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. We are at our most vulnerable just before a storm. In other words, in other words, in other words, uh, the, 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 the storm guys will tell you that there is five or six different types of categories of storms. But when you get to the worst storm, there seems to be a calm. Have you ever been in a situation where you know things are about to go bad? You feel it in your gut and you feel it in your heart and you feel it in your prayer life and you feel it all around you. There is storms on the way. And yeah. somebody sitting here tonight is a candidate for a storm for there are three kinds of people in this world. Someone who's on the way into a storm someone who is in a storm and someone who's on the way out of a storm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are three kinds of people. If you're on the way in, then this sermon is for you. If you're in the middle of it, then trust me, this sermon is really for you. But brethren, if you're on the way out, you should be praising God with every sentence that I say tonight because you have been there, done that, got the t-shirt and you're wearing it. Come on now. I'm suggesting tonight that boy, God is about to deliver someone. But if you've been through a storm and you're still here, then you ought to start praising Jehovah. Mm -hmm. uh, what is interesting about the next part of the narrative is that the Bible says, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in a ship. Uh -huh, and there was also with them other little ships. And now they're on the Sea of Galilee, them and the other people that are following Jesus. There is an entourage. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, when they didn't expect it, they came a storm. Now, this was no ordinary storm. This was no meteorologist kind of storm. This was no storm that BBC or ITV uh, or Carol on, on BBC Breakfast could, could tell you about. Brethren, I came by here to tell you that this was a supernatural storm. This storm was sent by the enemy to assassinate Jesus before he got to the cross. And so in the Sea of Galilee, he decided to turn the place upside down. Jesus went to the back of the boat and he went to sleep on a pillow, scholars say, and he was in the back of the boat. Now, the storm came and the disciples decided that they were intelligent enough and they were expertise enough to deal with the storm. And so what did they do? Pastor, the, the storm, the water is coming into the boat and, and they're holding the mask and they're pulling ropes and they're getting things together. They've dealt with many storms. 
storm, but I came by here to tell you there is a difference between a hurricane, category one, two, three, four, or even five, and a supernatural storm where the enemy unleashes every demon in hell to come into your life and to turn your life upside down. Your education can't help you. Your expertise can't help you. Uh -huh. Your singing can't help you. Your ability to deal with solutions can't help you. Your money in the bank can't help you. But when there is a supernatural storm, only Jesus can help you. Amen. There they were in the midst of the storm. They're trying to deal with the storm. But they can't deal with the storm. The Bible said it wasn't just an ordinary storm. It was a great storm. The word great translated in modern vernacular say it was a storm that was beyond their comprehension. All of the expertise being fishermen could not deal with this storm. Hallelujah. But brethren, there was somebody in the boat. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. There was somebody in the boat that could deal with their storm. The reality is they were not good men. They were not great men. These men had a lot of sin, had a lot of envy, had a lot of jealousy. As a matter of fact, at this point in the, in the scripture, I didn't even like the disciples. They were arrogant. They were full of mouth. They wanted to be at the top. Some wanted to be on the right and on the left of God. I don't like the disciples prior to the cross. But here they were in the midst of the storm. And with all the expertise they had, they could not deal with the storm. Hallelujah. But brethren, there was somebody in the boat. And as much as I don't like Peter, he came up with a good idea. Come on now. Peter decides he's going to deal with the storm. And, 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 and so he runs back because they're about to seek. They're about to go down. It's about to be over. Hallelujah. It's about to finish them off. So they run to the back of the boat and Peter now shakes Jesus. Hallelujah. He thinks Jesus is sleeping. I got a question for you. If there's water in the boat, if the boat is about to sink, come on now. How come Jesus wasn't drowning in the boat? Because homeboy wasn't sleeping. Because Matthew 25 tells us he never sleeps nor slumbers. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Hallelujah. He's always awake. What if Jesus really slept? Brethren, there will be collisions in space. The earth would stop spinning. That we'll have more than a pandemic. Come on now. There'll be worse than a nuclear war or nuclear bomb. It would be over if Jesus really slept. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that Jesus is not sleeping. Obama can sleep and Trump can sleep and Boris can sleep and everybody else can sleep and everything keeps on rolling. But I came by here to tell you that if Jesus really slept, it would be over. Well, watch the move now. They go back and they shake him up and they say, care us thou not that we perish. Now, whenever you're talking to Jesus and you imply that he doesn't care, uh -huh, you are getting ready for a rebuke. Uh -huh. But before he rebukes you, he has to help you. I hope some leader will learn from what Jesus does, because some of us are so quick to rebuke, but not to help. You know, people are so quick to say you've committed adultery or you've committed fornication or you're a homosexual or you are this and they point in the finger at you, but nobody wants to help you. Come on now, when you really need some help. Hey, here is Jesus now. Care us down, not that we perish. Jesus jumps up in the back of the boat. Hallelujah. And he doesn't rebuke them because you know what? The Bible says he cares. Come on now. He cares for me and he cares for you. Is anybody here? The reason why you're here, half smiling today is because he cares. The reason why you're here and you're not out of your mind because of the storm is because God cares. Hello. The reason why your children are still following Jesus is because he cares. The reason why the ones who are not following Jesus didn't die in their sin. Hallelujah. It's because God cares. Is someone understanding what I'm saying? God cares. I don't care how bad things are for you. God cares for you. Things could be a million times worse. If it wasn't for the grace of God, grace doesn't only save you, but it sustains you. God cares. Amen. Well, 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 before I get to the final two verses, I'm going to leave it alone and I'm going to back up the train. I'm going to put the thing in reverse and I'm going to hit some points because you all need to know today why storms come. 
storms come because we become complacent. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now. The disciples were complacent. They were more interested in their position than in their Christ. Come on now. They were more interested in where they were, right and left hand of the Father. They wanted to be at high positions. Their jealousy and envy against each other was terrible. They became complacent. And tonight, I want to say that God would allow storms to come because of complacency. The devil, one of his tricks in spiritual warfare is to make church members and community members complacent. Yeah. The second point I want to make about the storm, hallelujah, is that they, <laughs> Luan, they were going down. They were sinking, Pastor. It was as if they couldn't do anything to stop the storm. They were going down. But what they had to do, they started throwing things overboard, which is what you normally do in a storm. The reason why storms come, my second point tonight, the reason why storms come, hallelujah, is so you can throw things overboard. And the things that you throw overboard, because when the storm comes, let me just tell you this, when the storm comes, hallelujah, when the storm comes, mm -hmm, you prioritize. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they didn't throw their money overboard. Come on now. I know they didn't throw their gold and silver overboard. But the things that were not important to them had to go. Maybe the reason you're in the storm tonight is because there are things you're holding on to that you think is dear to you, but it's taken the place of God in your life. And God says the storm is going to come until you get rid of what is taking my place in your life. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm telling you, we are sinking. And look at the world out there. Like the theme song says, brethren, we are sinking. We are in trouble. And brethren, the people we turn to, we think are our keepers in the time of crisis. They can't help us. Because tonight, God is saying it's time to get rid of some stuff. Get rid of some physical, get rid of some material, get rid of some things that are holding you down, get rid of some sins that are in your life that is holding you back from having a closer walk with God. And tonight, God is saying, if you don't do that, you will sink in the storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, well, well. The third reason why storms come is for your acknowledgement of Jesus Christ. Amen. Always somebody knew what I just said. Is to acknowledge the power uh, of Jesus Christ. Is someone here? Brethren, they tried everything. They did everything they knew. If they had a mobile phone, they would have checked up, come on now, on Google to find out how to overcome a storm. But I came by here to tell you, boy, I wish it was Sunday morning. I feel like preaching. Where's Marvin with my ham and organ, man? I feel like preaching like that. Boy, I tell you. I, I, I tell Marvin, I, if, you don't, if I don't see him with that ham and tonight, it's over. Tell him he needs to stay where he is, accept the sweet bread. Come on, say amen. Now watch this move. Mm, 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 mm. Brethren, we are so far from God that if it weren't for the trials, some of us wouldn't even pray. Okay. If it wasn't for the difficult time, do you know it is said that the only time when saints and sinners pray is when the road is rough and the going is tough and the hills are hard to climb. If, if, if we don't go through it, we recite our prayers. You know, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord, my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, you know, we recite the prayers. It's almost like we pray the same prayer every day. But let a storm come by. Hey! Brethren, we on our knees. We ain't getting up. Come on now. We don't call the prayer line six in the morning. At 12, we're on the prayer line again. Every Wednesday night, we're in the church. Come on now. Every Sabbath, we're in the church. But we can't get enough prayer. So you wonder why God allows storms to come. It's because, brethren, he wants us to depend upon him and get close to him. Amen. Too many of us are far from God. We are benefit Christians. We only pray when we want something. And tonight, God is saying to us that, brethren, the closer I get to you, the more you make me feel. Come on now. God is saying, let's get together and feel all right. Hey, God is saying there's too much distance. There's too much space. And so I'm going to allow the Galilean storm to come by and to upset your life so that you will cry out to me. And like the woman in the video, hallelujah, you will rely upon me. Yes, 
it sounds bad. Yes, she shouldn't have gone through what she went through, but boy, she's closer to God now than she's ever been. She may have been a drug addict like her parents if she had gone back with them. She may have been in difficulties. She may never have found God, but I'm glad that in the midst of her storms, God kept her, hallelujah. And then what did God do? God gave her a new life tonight. Brethren, new life is not the name of a church. It's an experience with Jehovah. Amen. Well, 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 I want to get deeper. You already elbow the person next to you. If there's no one there, elbow your guardian angel and say the preacher's about to get deeper. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we're going we to tackle this next couple points and we're going home. Hey, Jesus wakes up in the storm. Hey. What I love about Jesus, I said it before, he doesn't rebuke you. He blesses you first, and then he asks you to fix your business. Watch this next move. He stands up in the storm, and instead of rebuking them right away, he says, peace, be still. The storm comes so that you will enjoy the peace that Jesus brings. Amen. Brethren, you hear what I say? Mm. I wish someone knew what I said. Have you ever been in the midst of a spiritual storm where the trials are all around you? Your loved ones has turned their back and it's just you and Jehovah. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, when you should be down in the dumps, there is a peace hey, that comes across your life. Come on now. And all of a sudden, you can relax. Come on now. The storm is still raging a bit, but you can relax because now God has taken over. I dare you tonight to give her God the storm. Mm -hmm. Give him the storm and relax in the peace that he has because he uses the words peace. Be still. That means peace don't go nowhere. Hey, that means peace stand still. Peace don't run. Peace hang on. Peace stay in my house. Peace stay all around me. Peace, peace stay in my car. Stay on my job. Peace be still. Don't go nowhere. Brethren, tonight somebody needs peace to stand still. Amen. Somebody needs peace not to move because we've gone through so much stuff. And pastor, one of the greatest needs of this world is not money but peace. Amen. There's a little book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings. And in there she mentions that peace is the greatest commodity of our times. Yes. And brethren, if ever there's some time that we need peace, it is now. Mm -hmm. Mental health, like we saw in our health tip today, brethren, we're in trouble. Domestic abuse, we're in trouble. I get so many prayer requests, pastors, for people who are struggling with, with mental illness and domestic violence and, and all kinds of stuff because of this pandemic. Marriages are breaking up. Children are in trouble. I mean, I'm in school today and people got anxiety and all kinds of stuff. We're in trouble. Brethren, God says tonight, peace, be still. <laughs> Every time you're faced with a trial from the enemy from now on, just look the trial in the eye and say, peace, be still. If, you, if you're on the way home from work and you're not sure how you're going to meet your spouse, as soon as you open the door and you look them in the eye, just say, peace, mm. be still. Come on now. Yeah, when, you, when you're on the way to checking your bank account online, come on now, and you know that things ain't going well. Brethren, look at your bank account and say, peace. Be still. I came by here to tell you that those are some of the most powerful words you will ever hear from the mouth of Jesus. As we go through this pandemic, the word of God is peace. Amen. Be still. Amen. And you could only have peace if Christ stands up. Amen. Hallelujah. Now watch this next move. The scholars say he calmed the winds and the waves. They obeyed his voice, because he is the creator. But it gets deeper than that. The reason why he had to calm the winds before the waves is because winds cause waves. Yes. Oh, someone didn't hear what I said. Ooh. Hey, boy, I tell you, man, you're, I'm going to shout by myself. That boy, the Holy Ghost hit me with that. I said, Bridget, when he hit me with that, I, I just had to shout by myself because some of y'all ain't shouting. I'm going to shout for myself. Hallelujah. Bridget, let me tell you, the winds cause waves. Mm -hmm. So the winds need to be calmed before the waves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, God deals with the causes of our problems. Hallelujah. Before he deals with the symptoms. 
Oh, someone didn't hear what I just said. Because too many of us are symptom people. So we deal with drugs and we deal with adultery and we deal with fornication. These are all symptoms. They're not causes. And until we get to a place, church, where we're willing to help people to get to the cause of their problems, come on now, to spend time in prayer with them, that God will reveal things to them and then help them on the journey. What use do we have? If all we do is react to symptoms, then we are not good. And the bottom line is tonight, my God is not an anodin God, a Panadol God, a Band-Aid God. Those all deal with symptoms. And the pain is still there four hours later. God says tonight in your life, peace be still. Mm. But he calms the winds, which calms the waves. Amen. I wish someone knew what I just said. Amen. God wants to calm your storm. Hallelujah. He wants to calm your storm from the beginning, from the cause, so that it will never ever come back again hmm. guarantee you if you deal with symptoms they will keep coming back guarantee you relapse will knock on your door you will keep on being a drug addict you'll keep on having sex in your marriage and outside of your marriage you will keep on, on on smoking and drinking because you know what many of us do it because we're in a church that teaches symptoms uh, is important so we have a fearful religion because we are scared because of the symptoms that we exhibit. Mm -hmm. And I came by here to tell you tonight, brethren, <laughs> you know, let me say this. If you're serving God out of fear, you're in trouble. Yeah. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. And that's why, Pastor, some people ask the question, why are you so transparent? Why do you, oh, brethren, I have to be transparent because I serve a God that heals from the cause. Come on now. And when he heals you, you can open your mouth and talk. But I can tell folk who are not healed because they don't talk. Folk that who are not healed are scared. They're scared about what people think. They're scared about what people will do. They're scared that people will take their little testimony and turn it around. And veteran, I, I don't say I don't care, but I really don't care. What you think about me is not important. But if I've been through a storm, then I need to tell somebody the testimony. Hallelujah. I need to open my mouth and tell them where God has brought me from. I need to open my mouth and tell them that I'm still struggling, but I'm still here. Hello. I need to open my mouth and, and not make them think that I'm lying or faking or I'm walking around with a Bible on my chest and I'm sending my Sabbath school lesson. And brethren, I came by here to tell you that means no points in the kingdom of God. What means anything? And you overcome by the word of your testimony open your mouth and tell somebody but if you're scared brethren you're not healed and you're still in the storm hmm. because fear is the absence of faith and tonight we're calling on faith in jesus name hallelujah well they look at jesus and they see the winds and the waves obey his voice and like salt and pepper, the rap group back in the day, they say, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Hey, they've never seen love like this before. Boy, look at my Jesus. Homeboy just got up. Yeah, Shireen is, is about to fall off her chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got up, man. And, and you know something? I love Jesus because when he gets up, things happen. Amen. And if you got the Holy Ghost in you, brethren, when you get up, things should happen. Come on now. When you get up, things should happen. Lives should change. People should look at you and say, I want to be like that Daniel over there. Come on now. Yeah. Tonight, I'm saying to you, man, when Jesus stood up, the guys looked at him and say, what a man, what a mighty good man. And it wasn't because they were gay. They just haven't seen anything like that before. They looked at Jesus and they couldn't believe that somebody could speak to the elements of a storm and get the storm to stop. I came by here to tell you, God still speaks to elements in storms. He can make the devil move. Hallelujah. Demons tremble at the sound of his voice. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Brethren, tonight God is in the storm with you. God is right there. I'm so glad, Pastor, that Jesus didn't come from the other side of the lake and then came into the storm. He was in the storm with them. Amen. All you got to do tonight is run back 
to the back of the boat. Because you know what? You left him there mm. and tried to do it on your own. Mm. You left him there and you thought that a devotion was going to help you. Mm. You left him there and you thought that singing in a choir or a singing group was going to help him, help you. You left him there and you went with your friends and you decided that you were going to do your own little thing. You left him there. But tonight, hallelujah, he's just where you left him. Brethren, he is consistent. He's in the storm. I dare you to run back and say, care us thou not that we perish. Mm. And watch him calm the storm in your life. Well, the young man told me, Pastor, I'm giving up on God. He said, God doesn't help me. He said, he's going to join a gang in Compton, California. He said, they're better to me than church members. Well, he went out there and he joined the gang pastor and he wanted to be a part of what they were doing. The first time they asked him to go and take a gun and shoot somebody as an initiation for joining the gang. He took the gun. He had never shot a gun before. And he went to shoot somebody, but he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. He came back. He lied to them and told them that he did it. But of course, they never heard it on the news. They never saw nobody. And they knew he was lying. Well, they decided they were going to kill him. Because he had lied and he wasn't willing to follow through with the initiation. I got a phone call about five in the morning. And the phone call was, Pastor Ray, I need your help. He said, I've been shot in the leg. They're trying to kill me. Now, I'm not crazy to go where he is. Come on, say amen. And, 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 and try and do all of that hero stuff. Hallelujah. He told me they were coming after him and he was on the run. And he, the first thing that came to his mind was me. And he called me in his phone. He said, but I may die tonight. I told him right where he was, brethren, start calling upon the name of Jesus. Amen. And I will pray, hallelujah. And I called the prayer warriors to pray. Brethren, I could hear him on the phone as I'm doing three-way calls with different people. And man, he's calling upon the he's begging God to come and help him, save his life. God, I'm sorry. You should have heard what he was telling God. The good news of the gospel is, hallelujah is that he did not die that night. Come on, say amen. amen. The good news of the gospel is they couldn't find him and he was right in front of their eyes because he was shot and he couldn't really run. But everywhere they looked, they couldn't find him. Have you ever thought that God, God shields you from what people want to do to you? Come on now, just like the Egyptians, hallelujah. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. God will blind them. They couldn't even see the Israelites. God will go right behind you and shield you from the people. And brethren, he should have been dead that night. But the goodness of God is he did not die that night, hallelujah. And the good blessing is behind it, hallelujah, is that that night, he decided to give his heart to Jesus. He found his way to the house. I had a, a cabin behind my house. I put him in there and he went to sleep. Hallelujah. And he woke up in the morning and I said, man, they're going to keep on coming. He said, I don't care what they do to me now. I'm going to give my heart to Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you the reasons why storms come is because we need to get close to God. It's because we need, we have become complacent and we're walking away from God. It's because we're not praising God. It's because we're not treating Christ as the deity that he is, and we're not surrendering to him. And tonight I came by here to tell you the way out of the storm is to surrender your life to Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. And in the name of Jesus, your escape route out of the storm is total surrender to Jesus Christ. The cross before me, the world behind. Someone needs to know tonight the storm is here because God wants your attention. And I don't know about you, but when I look at what God has done for me, Pastor, I'd be a madman mm. to walk away from God mm. and try something else to calm my storm. I'd have to pay him no money. Come on now. 
I don't have to give him anything. As a matter of fact, he said, Ray, you don't have to do nothing. Just give me yourself. And I will do the rest. Amen. Tonight, God is saying to someone, your escape route from the storm is to surrender. Amen. Tonight in the chat on YouTube and on Zoom, put the words, if this is you, I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Or I just want to surrender. Or just surrender. Place it in the chat. We will pray after the song that Paul was singing. And brethren, we're going to pray because your storm is over. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee, I need thee every hour. Enjoy your pain, come quickly and abide, or oh, life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee, you so much Paul for the words and song tonight I want to pray I want to pray I want to pray for somebody who's in a storm if you're in a storm and you'd like prayer tonight don't just put it in the chat put the hand up on the screen let me see your hand up on the screen click on that blue hand um, do whatever you need to put thumbs up whatever you want put put it up on the chat Bridget, I want to pray for those hands tonight I want to pray for those hands I see it Carol I see it I want to pray for those hands I want to pray for that hand Amen, 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 amen. Sim, I see that too. Amen, Gene, I see that. Come on, man. We're praying for hands tonight. Derek, I see that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I see that. We're praying for hands tonight on Zoom. If you're in on YouTube, brethren, whatever they have there, I don't know what they have in their chat, but just place something in there. You're raising your hand or just raise your hand where you are. God will see the hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're visiting tonight, and you have heard a word, and you want to try this Jesus, hallelujah, and you want to say the words of what Paul has just sung, I need you every hour. If you want to say that, place that in the chat. The number is there for you to call the preacher. If you're not baptized, brethren, I don't know what you're waiting for. The boy was shot in the leg. Don't wait till you get shot, brethren. You better do it now while you got a moment. We don't know what's going on. As a matter of fact, you know, with all the stuff going on, if the church it should be packed. It should be packed with people coming and saying, Pastor, just baptize me. <laughs> just baptize me because I want to be born again. If that's you, place it in the chat from 6 to 106. 
place it in the chat. And uh, Pastor's number is there, 0777-163-1885. And if you dial that number, text the number, if you want to be anonymous in this thing, he would respond to you and have a conversation. Whatever you're going through, no matter how bad the storm is, here at New Life and King's Cross, we have things set up, cornerstone counseling. We got all this stuff that you need to help you. Bible studies, and we course, we pray. Hallelujah. We believe in the power of prayer. And I know that, man, because when I, Shirley, when I needed prayer time, New Life prayed me through my storm. And I praise God, Cresswell, for the prayer meetings we used to have. Man, you guys prayed for me, prayed me through, prayed me into a house, prayed me into a car, prayed me into, into a job, prayed me into everything. Hallelujah. And when I look back on that time, and Julia, and I look back on the time now, I can say that God delivers from the storm. Because when I came to new life, I was broken. But God, look what he does, man. I'm telling you, 10 years on, man, look what God does. Man, he restores everything the enemy tried to take away. And sometimes I lay there, Cresswell, and I'm in tears at how good God has been to a sinner like me. And I dare, I dare somebody to speak bad against God. I'd be like David and Goliath. I don't throw a stone, knock you upside the head, and you'll be in trouble. Don't talk about my God because I've been in the storm and I made it through the other side in Jesus' name. I'm not, Bridget, I'm not perfect. I sin on a regular, but I know where to go when I need some help. I go to the back of that boat and I say, carry us down not. And before I could even get the nut out, he's on the way up and he calms the storm. And then I get the peace. I don't need ganja. I don't need cocaine. I don't need nothing like that. Brethren, I just tried Jesus. Hallelujah. 24-7 Jesus. And he gives you a better high than any dope can give you. Because dope will send you high in a moment. Huh? But Christ will send you high for eternity. Amen. I dare somebody. I dare somebody to talk about my God. I'll come visit you and have to deal with you in Jesus' name. Try him tonight. Let's pray. Father, the hands that are raised. Hallelujah. Lord, they're raised to say that we want to have that personal relationship with you. We got to get through the storm, Lord, and you're the only one that can take us through. And so tonight, Lord, we're going to trust you more than we can trace you. We're going to lean on you like never before. Tonight, Lord, we're going to say, you know what? We're surrendering our all to you. We're going to cry out in the words of the song that Paul sang tonight. I need thee every hour. God, we need you right now. The storm is raging. Somebody's on the way into a storm. Lord, give them the stick-to-itiveness to hold on to you during the storm. Someone is in a storm. Let them cry out to you even tonight. And Lord, calm the storm in Jesus' name. And Lord, some of us are on the way out of the storm and we are praising you. Hallelujah. Because of your wonderful works towards the children of men. Tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rescue the perishing. Give hope to the dying. Jesus, because you're merciful and you will save. Lord, hide us in the cleft of the rock so the storm doesn't take us out. Hide us in the cleft of the rock, Lord, and you are that rock, Christ Jesus. Cover us, Lord, so when the storms of life come raging, we can cry out to you and we can hear you calm the winds and the waves. Lord, calm our storm, not just the symptoms of the storm, but Lord, the causes of the storm and give us the power, Lord, during the storm to prioritize things and throw the things that are not necessary for our salvation overboard. Uh, some relationships must go tonight. Some music must go tonight. Some TV must go tonight. Lord, some abusive situations must go tonight. Lord, the sins that so easily beset us, deal with them from the cause of the problem. Lord, take them out of us, Lord. Remove them from us and allow us, Lord, to have a new relationship with you. Take away complacency tonight. Take away heartaches. Take away difficulties. But more than anything, allow us, Lord, to learn the lessons in the storm so that when we come out of the storm, we will not return to our vomit. Come on, Lord. We claim deliverance tonight in Jesus' name. And we say tonight, Lord, what manner of man is this? that he will calm the winds and the waves and they will obey his voice. 
Thank you, God, for standing up in the midst of our storms. We trust you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.